Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna be working on a WD-45 uh, PTO issue. Uh, if that's something that you're interested in seeing, stick around, because it's coming up. All right, got this uh, WD-45 that uh, came in, and we've got a PTO problem. It's pretty obvious what it is. Um, the shift lever here that engages and disengages the PTO has broke off. So we're gonna be tackling that project next. Uh, first things first, we're gonna drain the fluid uh, out of that PTO cavity, um, get all that emptied out, and then we're gonna disconnect the PTO shaft, and then we'll just start unbolting it from the tractor. Uh, then once that's done, we'll slide over to the bench where I've got another PTO housing that we're gonna be using to get the uh, rod out of, and we'll be taking both of those apart, rebuilding them, or rebuilding this one with the parts from the other one, and then uh, sliding it back on here. So that's what we're gonna do. Let me uh, get set up here and we'll get going. All right, first things first, we're just going to drain all of the fluid out of here. All right, while that's draining, I'm going to see what I need to take out the pin here on the PTO shaft itself. And it looks like we're gonna be using 9 sixteenths for these uh, four, I'm sorry, gonna be six nuts um, on that. And what we'll have to do is loosen that thing up all the way around and let it fall down because we can't get the nuts on the other side off because of the way the PTO um, output is that that cover that holds the seal will not allow you to take that nut all the way off likewise here you know there's not enough distance between the housing and the um, uh, clearance on the on the threads coming out to get all of that so we're just gonna have to slide that all down as one unit so let me get set up on that and we'll get going bolt right there hopefully this will just slide backwards sometimes they're they're locked up in there and it really just depends on whether or not it can slide through the back seal back there so right there where that PTO goes through if it, if it won't slide there then we can't get it to slide here which means we got to take off a couple more bolts back there Probably that would be the easiest thing to do. So let's just slide back here. Let's see if these are three quarter. They are. Okay. Now, as long as it doesn't get caught up there on the PTO outlet. This whole thing should just come forward. And it's caught like most of them are. All right. We've got it where it can move, so that's good. I'm gonna go grab a, one of my pry bars here. All right, if you've never used one of these, uh, recommend it's a craftsman adjustable pry you push in here and then you can swivel that head however you want it so let me see i got my tire right behind me to contend with so i have to put it in like this kind of direction to get back in here if i can get that in that cavity right there it is moving So, we got our PTO disconnected there. Now it's time to start loosening the nuts on that housing. As I mentioned earlier, you're just gonna have to work around this thing. Probably takes just as much time to 
get the things loosened up is it's going to take to rebuild it. So you can see right there, I've loosened that nut as far as I can. It's now hitting the housing, but it's not off of the uh, stud coming out. So we have that same scenario all the way around this. So, oops, I'm gonna go through and loosen all of them. And the very last one that I do is what's going to allow us to break the seal right here. And that will let us drop down there. And therefore we can get those other nuts out of the way. Last one right here, and then it, we should be able to start breaking it loose from the housing, or from the torque tube. Yeah, and it, the other side's already let down. I don't know if you can see it up there. Oh yeah, you can. Come out a little bit different angle than the camera. Just loosen this puppy up. probably hold up on the bottom of my PTO housing with my hand. Yeah, loosen this one up. All right, now we slid down probably a quarter inch on this side. That may be enough to get this nut off of here. We will find out, yep. All right, so we gotta remember same scenario when we go to put this thing back together. We'll get started. We'll set it up there. I don't want to push it all the way up in there and get my gasket um, material up against that and then have it come back down because I got to get my the, the nuts to start on here. So. There we are. Here it is. So, just gonna kind of spin him around here. Just want to check my gears out. Yeah, everything looks good. Okay, uh, let me get some of this oil cleaned off of this, and we are gonna slide over to the bench and we'll get working on uh, tearing this thing apart. All right, so we made it over here to the bench with the housing, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just take off the um, cover here for the output shaft. And like I said, there's two seals in there. Got a nine, nine sixteenths bolt. Got three of those we're going to take out. I'm going to try to kind of clean up the oil and junk as I go on some of the hardware. So when I go for reassembly, um, it's just going to make it a little bit quicker. Yes, probably technically it's the same amount of time either way, just to clean it on the front end instead of the back. All right, you just pry him up off of there, like so. We've got a uh, race and a bearing on that shaft right there. And if everything looks good, we're just gonna reuse that. So I'm gonna look it over good. The race looks fine. I don't see anything that would indicate that we've got anywhere going on there. The seal obviously will get replaced. We'll drive it out here after a while. <clears throat> All right, 
So I'm looking down in here on that shaft where the seal actually sets. I wanna make sure that we don't have a, a groove cut in there and I see a little wear spot, but I don't think that it's gonna be anything that's gonna be a problem. Okay, let's see. I think we need to remove this top gear next. I think we have to because of the way that's positioned. Nope, it'll come right out of there. All right. So, got a bearing all the way on the other end there as well. This is the gear that actually engages uh, the PTO. <clears throat> I'm looking at that thing and it's seen better days. For sure it's pretty pretty rough right here on the edge all the way around and it's actually supposed to slide on this shaft let me get a hammer and just see if i can tap it it may just be in a bind So I think should move freely. Actually, I think, yeah, there is, there's a, a ball detent in there <clears throat> inside it. And that's kind of what helps hold you in position. I'm gonna finish inspecting this top bearing right here. That thing looks good to me as well. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that I slide this right back in my housing over here so I don't lose track of where it went. I think when I take out that other housing or take it apart, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna replace this gear. It's, uh, it's pretty rough here around the edges. There's some bits and pieces that's missing on there nothing crazy but i'm just going to inspect the other one i really want to see what it looks like when it comes out of there all right so to get that off we'll just pull that up we'll have to watch because those uh detents have uh, springs behind them so we don't want to lose those balls. This bearing here looks fine as well. I will inspect the race that's down in the housing here. And there's still a fair amount of oil down in there. So let's see here, probably, just gonna go over there and dump it. Got a uh, oil container. I'm gonna go dump that oil and then uh, clean that housing out and then I'll be back. All right, next step is we're gonna drive the shaft that is broken out. And to do that, we actually drive it in to the housing. Basically what that does is this uh, part of the lever slides in this part of the gear like this. And what it'll do is as you move it, it will slide this, uh, you know, if you're like, it's probably like this. When you push it this way, it'll slide it over into this engaged position down here. So. That's all it does, pretty simple. All right. So now that we've got that out, <clears throat> I've got a seal 
here. And I believe there's a bushing on the inside of that. We'll inspect that to make sure that it's not worn. The shaft itself looks fine, so I don't expect to have any kind of issues there. So let me grab my seal puller and uh, we'll just go ahead and pull that out. All right, let's get my seal puller in here. It's a coming. Check in behind there with it. And there it is. All right. So that's our oil seal. I need one of those. There's a little bit of a gap on this one in between the the uh, housing and where the seal was. And so there's some debris that got down in there. But basically when we put this new seal in, we're just going to drive it right back against that edge right there. on the inside there what you want to look for is just where the inside of that uh, casting right there and everything feels fine I don't feel anything that would make me suspect that we've got any kind of issue with that so that's cool all right next thing probably ought to do is Go ahead and pull this other one apart. It's the same process. I've got a couple of them here on the bench. Probably just gonna grab uh, this one right here. We're gonna pull that rod out of there and um, get that thing ready. And then I'll show you the install of the seal and then we'll start reassembly on this. All right, so I got the other uh, two PTO housings taken apart and the reason I had to do two of them is the first one the shaft I, I, that I needed was actually bent so so much for that the second one I was able to get a nice clean shaft and so we'll be ready to put that in first thing uh, or next thing rather we're gonna replace the seal right here that goes around that shaft it's an Agco part 702-240-642 and uh, it's just a little little seal Go ahead and take it out. I have already cleaned out that cavity. Go ahead and get it started here. I'm just sitting on the outer edges. Now, if you recall earlier, I talked about how that seal was not all the way in earlier on that other, uh, on the old seal. Same situation here. I've got to go ahead and countersink that. So I'm gonna take 15 sixteenths socket. I'm just gonna countersink him. That looks good. All right. Um, let's see here. Next step, I need to make sure that's clean down through there, and I should have done that before. <clears throat> now, that, uh, this is honed out or bored out to be the same uh, dimension of what the shaft is. So that shaft will just slide uh, right in there. So what I'm going to do is use some of my Lucas assembly lube. Get everything lubed up here so that we can slide through. I'm also going to lube that seal. So when we're pushing this through there, I want to make sure that I don't damage that. You'll have to turn this portion upward 
when you're going to install that because it, it won't fit in there if it's pointing down. It'll hit the housing. So you just start it in there like this. You just work it back and forth and it will come through your housing there and uh, out the side. All right. Uh, I thought I had the seal that I needed to go around the housing here, um, but I do not, so I'm gonna have to order those. But I'd like to just make sure that everything is gonna work as it should. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this together and we'll just take this off again at a later uh, date when those seals come in. So, uh, earlier, we saw that we had an issue with that gear. Uh, this is the whole assembly out of that other PTO. It's got a nice crisp gear on it. Um, everything's good shape. I did find out, however, that there are two different styles of shafts. One that's got the uh, grooves cut in it, just like your PTO spline. Yeah, the other one is smooth with a keyway. Um, so you could have two different ones. So if you're getting parts for one that's busted, make sure you know what you have. So to put this thing together, let me show you kind of how all that's gonna work. Looking down in the opening here, there's our lever. And as I mentioned earlier, that lever rides in this groove right here. So I'm gonna make sure the lever's all the way out. It's gonna be going in the up fashion. So whenever it rotates in, we're gonna move it to the up part of the housing. It can't go down because it will hit the bottom of the housing. So we're just gonna get it up out of the way. We're just gonna ease it in. We gotta line up our gear here with our top one. And then I'm gonna twist with my right hand and let that whole PTO uh, slide down in there. And be just like that. So we've got it all the way down in the race on the bottom side. We've got our lever connected now to that. So, in order to check it, I've got to put my lid on here or the uh, cover. So, I'm going to go ahead and slide it. One thing that I didn't note earlier, there are shims right here. And those shims will set um, the backlash on those bearings. So, those shims I'm leaving alone. So I'm going to slide this over like so. Go ahead and put my three bolts in there that we took out earlier. And again, the only reason I'm doing that right now is I want to make sure that my lever and everything is functional. We don't have any issues with that. So get our holes lined up here. Make sure you tighten these evenly. Okay, so we got that there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put on the lever. I did go over to the tractor and get the lever that was on the tractor off of it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and slide that in place, the big hole right here is where we're going to put in the pin so we're just going to slide that down over and actually before i do that i wanted to add one more piece there is a washer that was on one of those other ptos that kind of uh, covers up this whole area right there so i want to put that on there that's going to protect my seal go ahead and slide my lever in place Get my set screw here. And we'll hand tighten that. And I need my deep well.
All right, so we got that set. Now we just want to test it out, as I mentioned earlier. Now to do that, I can see down in the housing, I can see that drive gear that we actually engage. Clean up some of this oil right here. Let's see if I can get you a view in there. So it is right back in that corner. You just can't quite see. if this will help us okay there it is I'm gonna just move my lever here you can see it sliding forward engaged push the lever backwards disengaged engaged I'll go ahead and spin everything here to make sure that we're good everything is spinning as it should freely both directions disengage and then we're just spinning here all right so we had a shipment uh, come in today that's got some parts both for this uh, pto that we were rebuilding on that wd-45 uh, but also for this 175 that i'm working on kind of during the same timeline I got all this uh, shipped in from Sandy Lake Implement there in Pennsylvania. Um, I know a lot of you guys have used them, but uh, they're the best uh, supplier that I've found so far. And uh, Brenda up there does a great job as well. <clears throat> all right, let's see what all we got going on in here. Get you slid over here where you can see. All right, so we've got our two gaskets there that go on the sump pickup on that 175. So uh, if you haven't been watching any of those videos, uh, you ought to check those out. That's gonna be on another video series. Let's see what we got here. Voltage regulator, that's going on the 175. Got a new muffler as well and this is a stanley muffler i was looking at oem it was about i think two times the price and there wasn't a guarantee that it wasn't going to be a stanley when it got shipped in so went with the stanley on that so again check out 175 alice uh, video out we've got i think five parts on that and here we should be able to get into some of our seals that we're looking for on this PTO box. Yes, right here. So there's those two seals. And I end up getting a couple of extra seals as well. <clears throat> on there, I got my replacement on the sides seal. A couple others. I'm not quite sure what this one is. Oh, yeah, that goes... Uh, that was a part to replace that I had to uh, use out of a wheel bearing kit. So you now I got a shifter boot, a knob, and a drain plug, plastic uh, seal for that 175. All right, so uh, now that we've got our uh, two new seals that we need for this uh, PTO, <coughs> PTO box, gear box, and uh, we can go ahead and kind of finish that project up now. So basically what I'm gonna do next, or so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that front um, off right here and uh, get it kind of turned around here so you can see. Pull that back off, I'll replace. Uh, there's one seal in there currently, and that's a real a wide seal. Uh, what I've been doing is uh, two seals, so you can actually fit two in. We'll put one one way and one the other. And the reason I reverse those is the, um, there's a, a place right here on the edge of that PTO shaft when it sticks out there, that's actually a smaller diameter than what the shaft is that's going through that seal. So if I put both seals the same direction, 
um, as you can see, the, the actual ceiling part of the sill is on the front side. If I put them both like this together, basically this outer edge is gonna be at the um, angle of the shaft right here that's actually a different diameter. So I'm gonna put one one way, I'm gonna spin this one around, put it the other way, and then you can see I'm gonna be back in where the oil is and have my nice seal there. So that's what we're gonna do on that. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that off and then we'll drive those seals out and then I'll get my new ones uh, installed. All right, so we'll come up back here on the back side. I'm just gonna drive those seals out over here on the vise. So here is the old one and you can see how thick it is. The new ones don't come like that. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna be able to do is take these two. It's a little bit, they're just a little bit bigger total, but fit right in there and really make a nice seal. So put that Permatex around through here. Just a little bit of it. I'm just gonna put a thin coat on the outer wall here and rub it in. All right, grab our first seal. Now, just so I don't end up getting any kind of leaks on this, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some more of this Permatex. Just gonna put a thin coat on here. Again, there's gonna be the paper seals that set the backlash on the bearing here. So, I'm gonna spread that on here. I'm gonna grab my utility knife. I'm just gonna go around that, those paper gaskets right there, just like that. This, it was just painted in on that one, one edge there. So I'm gonna lift those out of there. So those are not actually paper. I thought they were paper on this, but they are not. They are metal. And clean that surface up. I'm gonna make sure they are nice and clean. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some Permatex around the outer edge here where those are gonna go. Not putting up uh, much of it, I just need a thin layer is all I need. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna take our gaskets, our uh, metal rings here, put them back on. Now I'm ready to set it. Actually gonna go ahead and lube up that shaft right there. It's got, I can't tell if that's that assembly lube that I used or if that's just some oil. You can see the difference right here in the diameter too, now that that's off of there. All right, Lucas, assembly lube. Put on that shaft right there. 
I'm gonna go ahead and dab it on the two seals as well. I'm gonna slide those on. very carefully. All right. All right, so the uh, the bearings in there are too tight. So I'm gonna have to pop this back off. Um, I don't know why prior to putting the new seals on, um, we didn't have any issue. Maybe there was a, some dirt or something in there, but I'm gonna grab a couple more of those shims, pull this back off, put my shims on there, and then that will set me. So let me get that done and then uh, be right back. All right, so I added two more uh, shims back here be behind the cover, and now you can see what we got. So uh, made a lot of difference there. Um, I turn it by hand. That's much better. All right. <coughs> At this point, we're done rebuilding the actual PTO housing. Uh, so we're going to be sliding back over to the belly of the WD-45. I'm going to clean up uh, the bottom side of that thing and make sure that it's oil-free. And then I've got a new gasket right here for the gearbox. And that'll just slide right on top. We'll use some Permatex. And then uh, we'll slide the whole assembly back onto that tractor. And we'll be in pretty good shape. All right, so let me slide over to the tractor here and get set up. And then we'll watch it go back on. All right, looks pretty good. I'm gonna let that set for just a few minutes while I prep the bottom side of the housing over here on the tractor. So let's slide over there and get it ready. All right, so up underneath the belly here, I have cleaned off everything, got the old gasket off, cleaned it down with some carb cleaner, got everything wiped down and we're ready to go. I just kind of wanted to show you what the gears look like up in there. So you got your drive gear directly above us and that's what's gonna hook into that top gear right there. And then that's how that will continue to spin as long as the engine is rotating. So right behind that is the hand clutch. So if the hand clutch is open, uh, then this will continue to spin. It'll have direct power coming in from the, the engine. So if you hit your foot clutch, then you'll lose power here. So. That gives you that live PTO. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Let's get this uh, PTO box uh, installed. All right, we're just going to lift it up in place here very carefully and try to get at least one of our nuts started on here, and that will hold us. I do not want my gasket to go up and touch the gearing up in there, so let me get in a little bit better position here where I can hold this thing, because it's kind of awkward. It's a small box, but it's kind of heavy. All right, so let's try that right there. Just gonna slot him up here like so. I got a washer and a nut. It's not a lock washer, it's just a flat washer. All right, got that one on. I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around this housing. So if you remember, if we go all the way up, we can't get them started.
Okay. Got those other two to do on the other side. Um, not that big of a deal. Get those done. And the next step is we're going to push our PTO shaft back through and get our pin put in. All right, next step is getting the PTO shaft installed. I've already kind of got it started. I'm gonna go back to the back there. I'm just gonna tap it on. It's a little bit tight. All right, last step is filling the reservoir. I'm not gonna do that tonight. I'm actually gonna wait, let this thing set up overnight, and then I'll drop the oil in it. I still gotta put my uh, drain plug in the bottom there as well. So I'll go ahead and get all that ready for fluid, but I'm not gonna put fluid in it until tomorrow. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, hit like, subscribe, share the video. Uh, part two of this will be servicing the uh, WD-45 and go through uh, kind of changing the oil and just checking things out, greasing it, and making sure that the rear differentials are uh, full of oil. So anyway, thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.